Okay, this is Steve Bonacontri from SOA Consulting Services continuing our Angular 4 tutorial. And uh, this particular uh, lecture is going to be on routing. We're going to discuss um, uh, everything you need to know about routing. I'm going to go through uh, several examples with different routing features. Okay, first, let's take a look at what an Angular application means pictorially as far as a route goes. We all know that one, one feature that Angular provides in a web application is you'll have an index.html and inside that index.html you'll have an Angular application. In the Angular application uh, the user is going to interact with that particular area and Angular is going to provide certain functionality and event handling and dynamic binding, etc. All the nice features of Angular. And so what you want to do uh, is you want to render different market fragments and you want to minimize uh, uh, the page rendering, the server uh, accessing, etc. So the routing basically uh, to start out with routing is if you have an Angular application and you have a menu, let's say, uh, with menu items, home, and chat. And let's suppose you have a footer at the bottom um, of the Angular app. Basically, um, what you tend to do is want to click on links and view different site areas. And so Angular provides this, this uh, capability of uh, using a primary route. And when you click on a link, you could define it to be a router link. And that router link will point to a component template and that component template will be rendered in a router outlet. And so one form of the router outlet is a primary route, and, and that's typically what we would use if we were just clicking on links and, and changing the view of a center page of a, of a web app. So if you navigate to, you click on home, you'll show the home view, which is, let's say, a home component template and if you then go and click on chat, you will show a chat component template and, and you'd be looking at a, a chat view in this primary route. Now the other type of route you can have is a child route. So suppose you click on the home link uh, and that is a router link and you're showing a home view uh, uh, or I'm gonna say a home component template in a primary route and that template then has a link and you want to be able to click on that child link or button and show um, a different sub view inside that primary route and let's suppose you define a different router outlet it could be a child route and you could be showing a child component inside of of that view And so um, there's relationships between the components and the templates and sharing of data and passing of data that you might need to know. But, but, but then again, you could just use the router links and just be able to change the views of the different router outlets. Um, so we, we have a primary route and we have a child route. We also have something called an auxiliary route where you can click on a link and in the primary route show one component and in a different view um, show a different component. And so that's kind of viewed as an auxiliary route uh, where you're, you're viewing the primary route and also showing something in the auxiliary route. And when you change that, um, that uh, auxiliary route to null, it will go away and you could reshow the 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 the, the um, let's say the chat view whenever you want to okay then there's the concept of location strategies okay we have two types a hash based navigation and a history api based navigation the hash based navigation has a url and the first part of the url is a location on the server it has a protocol, a domain name, and a port. The second part of the URL has location on the client, which is the route path and let's say a route parameter. And those are separated by a hashtag. 
and we've been using uh, that uh, hash-based navigation for quite some time now. Um, and the default in Angular 4 is the history API-based navigation, which you can define a base href as forward slash in the header of an index that HTML file, or you could define an app base reference in the root module as a provider. And in this scenario, your URLs will not contain the hashtag, and you'll have a similar, uh, very similar URLs where the location of the client is at the tail end of, of the, the URL and defines the path on the client side without, without um, the browser referencing the, the server code. Okay, so we use the router module for routing in Angular 4. The building blocks of the router module are, num the first thing is the router. So there's a runtime router where you can call navigate and navigate by URL. And we have a router outlet, which is a directive that defines the placeholder within the web page where router should, be ren should render the component. And that looks like this syntax I've described here, this router hyphen outlet tag. It's pointing to where the component's going to render. We have a routes object, which is an array of routes that map the URLs to components to be rendered inside the router outlet. The router link is a directive for declaring a link to a route, uh, and that can contain parameters as well. And then you also have an activated route, which is an object that represents the route or routes that are currently active. So just to give you another example with a little bit more physical tags in it, the bottom line is you, you, you can have an index.html uh, page, and you could have an app-root tag, which defines your Angular app. That's your root component. You could have a navigational tag, and in that, in that navigational tag, you could have these router links. And when you click on the router link, the, the component uh, that that router link points to gets rendered inside this router outlet tag. And of course, you'll have uh, maybe a men menu tag on the left and the footer tag on the bottom. But the bottom line is when you do design, you're basically designing these tags and you're saying, this is my, what my page is going to look like. And I'm going to be rendering different components in this little router outlet area. OK, so the routes has a route interface, which is really important. You start out using it, very a very simple form of it, and then you start getting more sophisticated using different aspects of the route. So the first optional parameter is a path. OK, the path is bound to the link. So for example, forward slash products would be the path. And, and then I'm going to quickly jump to the component, which is the component rendered in the router outlet. So I define a path, I define a component. And when I click on that path, I render that, that uh, component in the outlet. And then you have a path, a path match string, which can be um, it's a path matching strategy. It could be full or prefix. You have a redirect to, uh, which redirects path to simpler path. And then you have um, can activate, can activate child, can deactivate, etc. And some of these things determine when you click on the router link whether you can actually activate that link and render the component, or whether you deactivate and you move away uh, and you're deactivating um, uh, that router link, whether you can move away from that view. Um, and we're going to show some examples of that. Um, and then there's another important one, um, the, the, the data. Uh, you can provide additional data to be provided to the component. Um, and so, for example, uh, I'm clicking on the link, and I'm going to render a component in a router outlet. The data could say, is this production? Is it development? It, and, and you could pass anything you want in JSON form. And there's a resolver. Um, it's used to look up data resolvers. Um, children, an array of child route definitions. 
and uh, load children, a reference to a lazy loaded child routes. And we'll be going over several of these um, uh, route attributes. But like I said, you're commonly using you know two through four of them, um, maybe five of them when you're building applications. Actually, um, you could easily use, I think we have some examples which use um, most, most of these, so we'll go through those. Okay, so what we're going to do now is our, our next um, tutorial is going to go through several different router examples. There's a router which describes the hash location strategy, uh, uh, a router which displays errors and uh, warns uh, a user when they're moving away from um, a view which might not have saved data, let's say. Uh, we're going to look at the router app-based um, reference uh, uh, example, which has a history API-based strategy. And we're going to look at a router with navigation, explicit navigation, where we actually call the navigate function. We're going to look at router params, which is, shows you how to pass parameters and data within an application. Now, passing parameters is very common in Angular applications. Uh, whenever you're you're navigating from one site area to another, you might need to still uh, uh, pass a product ID to see the product detail or whatever it may be. Then we're going to look at a router child, which shows sh child routes, and we're going to look at an uh, auxiliary routes example called router aux. Okay, so thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next lecture.